To get started, these are the materials I'm going to be working with. I fell in love with this Ankara fabric the moment I saw it and I knew I had to get it. I've got some matching lining. I have my pattern master and a pen to alter, rather to draft my patterns because I'm going to be starting from the scratch. Because I want this tutorial to be very detailed, I'm going to be taking us through how I drafted my pattern from the scratch. My front half length is 16 inches, which I have marked already, and that's the second line. The next thing I'll mark is my shoulder to bust measurement, which is 9. I'll also mark my shoulder to under bust, which is 12. I'll go ahead and then square a line using my pattern master. Thereafter, I would mark half of my shoulder measurement, 15 divided by 2 is 7.5 after which I will drop my shoulder by one inch for the shoulder slant and I will take three inches for the shoulder width or rather the neck width which is a standard measurement but this would be altered later on. The next thing I will mark is my chest line measurement of seven inches taking that measurement right from my shoulder slant after which I will square it down I would also extend the chest line measurement to the other part of my pattern paper because I'm going to be drafting my back pattern on that space. I'm going to be drawing down my arm all line. So in order to do that, I just brought down half of my shoulder measurement so that I can get a perfect straight line. After that, I'm going to be placing a quarter of my bust measurement on the chest line which is what i'm going over to do thereafter i would also place a quarter of my waist measurement plus one inch dart allowance so whatever your dart allowance is you will need to add it to a quarter of your waist measurement which is what i'm going over to do and then i'm going to be joining those points together once i'm through with that i'm going to be marking my dart and I'm going to be needing half of my bust span measurement. Mine is 7. Half of that is 3.5, which is what I'm going over to mark. Then I'm going to be marking half an inch on both sides. After which I'll go ahead and then draw in my dart legs. The difference between my front and back half length is one inch and that is what I'm going to be using for my bust dart. So I'm marking one inch below the bust line and I'm using that to create my bust dart. Thereafter, the next thing I'm going to be doing is to carry out my under bust tightening and at this point I'm going to be marking half an inch away from this other side of my dart leg. And I use half an inch because I'm not a busty person, I'm a size 6 and this works well. Another thing you can do is to place your under bust measurement on that line, excluding the dart. And then you mark out the excess you have left. That excess is what you would mark. So once you mark that, you would then connect from your bust line all the way down. I like to use my hand because it just has a way of making the bust area really more pronounced from experience i've realized that using my hand to draw this curve really works well for me instead of using the pattern master so once i'm done with that i'll go ahead and then complete my dart all the way down to the waistline so the goal is to draw your curve very well the next thing i'll do is to mark the length of the off shoulder and I'm working with five inches which is what I'm going to be doing so I'm just going over to mark five inches from the shoulder line and I'm going to be connecting the line all the way so this is my new shoulder line now afterwards I'm going to be marking half of the shoulder slant because we need to create a dart around this new neckline that we have marked so I'm just going over to cross my tape into two get half of the shoulder slant and then connect it to the bust points once i've connected it to the bust points i'm going to be taking half an inch for my dart allowance on both sides of the line that cuts across the new neckline once i'm done with that i would also go over and then create my dart and my dart would end half an inch before the bust point line the next thing I'll do is to draw my armhole 
even though I'm going to be altering this later on, marking three inches above the chest line, which corresponds with my new neckline, I'm going to be taking 0 0.75 inch away, just a normal way you draw your armhole, and then I'm going over to draw in the armhole. Because this is an off shoulder, we will need to readjust the armhole, and to do that, I'm going to be deducting 1.5 inch away from half of my shoulder measurement. Taking 1.5 inch away from 7.5 would give me 6 inches. And remember, I already have 1 inch for my dart allowance around the new neckline. So I'm going to be adding that 1 inch dart allowance, which I have already. I will add it to the 6 inches and that will give me a total of 7 inches. So I'm going to be marking 7 inches on that line. After which I would then go ahead and reconnect my arm hole. so the arm hole i drew initially is just to serve as a guide for me when i want to readjust and alter the to the new arm hole. so this is going to be my new arm hole. i'll be disregarding the initial one so guys i have my center front and my side front and then we are going to be moving over to drafting the back pattern like i said i'm going to be drafting the back pattern on the same pattern paper just alternatively and to get started, I have done the shoulder slant and extended the neckline and also extended the bust line. The first thing I'm going over to do is to draw the arm hole, which I will still alter later on. Remember, we use 6 inches for the neck width for the front. I'm going to be marking the same 6 inches for the back too. So I'll just go over and mark that down and then I'm going to be redrawing the arm hole for the back too. So guys, I have my new arm O for the back. After that, I'll go ahead and draw in the dart for the back. If you notice along my center back, I have it slanted. This is the usual thing I do. I take one inch away from the center back and I slant it just to eliminate any bulge. So I just thought to say this just in case you're wondering why the center back is slanted. I'm going to have to draw in my dart the usual way. Once I'm done with that, I would go over and add my zipper allowance along the center back. So this zipper allowance would also follow the slant that I have created. And I'm using 1.2 inch for my zipper allowance. So once I'm done with that, I will just connect it and then indicate that this region here is my zipper allowance. I'm also going over to add half an inch to the neckline of the back. I will be extending my zipper allowance to the half an inch and also extend my new arm hole to the half an inch. Once I'm done with all of this, I'll go ahead and then cut out my patterns. Before I fully cut out my pattern, I just thought to show us this. If I try to close the dart, you can see that the dart legs are not matching up, the neckline are not matching up. So to get rid of that, I'll just use my pattern master to smoothly blend in the neckline and then i would go ahead and cut so if you just cut out your dart like that you'll find out that when sewing you're going to be short of fabric on either of your panels they won't be matching up but if you do this you have saved yourself from encountering that so this is what i do most times just to avoid any discrepancies when i'm sewing my panel pieces together and i hope this helps you too so you can see closing my patterns together the neckline is blending properly i have no issues guys these are the panel pieces we are going to be working with i have the center front side front and the center back pattern moving over to the skirt part i'm going to be drafting the skirt on the lining for more visibility this line here is going to be the waistline and the first measurement i will take is the waist to hip measurement which is eight inches i'll also go over and the mark a quarter of the waist measurements plus one inch that allowance i would also include 1.5 inch sewing allowance on the waistline on the hip line i'm marking a quarter of the hip measurements plus 1.5 inch sewing allowance that's what i'm marking over there the next thing i'll do is to mark 18 inches which is my waist to knee 
when drafting a pencil skirt i like it when it's fitted around the waist so i'm taking 18 inches for the fitting area around the waist so what i'll do next is that the entire measurement i have on my hip line i'm going to be deducting one inch from that entire measurement i think i had about 10.5 deducting 10.5 i have 9.5 and that is what i'm going to be marking all the way down to my full length my camera couldn't capture this because my table is quite small so i took that measurement down all the way to the full length after which i connected all of my points together so doing that thing around the waist gives fitting around the knee rather this is my front skirt pattern and I'm going to be duplicating it for the back. I have extended all of the lines and I left about 1.5 inch for zipper allowance at the back, rather 1.2 inch, which is what I used for the bodies. Around the zipper allowance, I'm going to be taking one inch away and I'm going to be connecting it to the hip line in this slanted manner. The one inch I took away, I'm going to be marking it around the side i'm going to be replacing it around the side the next thing i'll do is to also connect from the hip line all the way to that waist to knee measurement for more fitting around the bum area of the skirt so all of these alterations gives you fitting around your skirt and i'm going to be taking that measurement all the way down what that means is that i'm going to be getting rid of the fabric there but i will be replacing the measurements on the side of my skirt pattern so the measurements i took out i'm just going over to replace it on the side and then i'm squaring down all of my measurements after which i'll go ahead and cut this out so i have my skirt pattern ready and i'm going to be using this to cut on my main fabric I also did some shaping around the waist area I marked about half an inch downward from the center front and then I connected it to the side. Also let me state here that my lining is going to be shorter than my main fabric by one inch meaning when I'm cutting on the fabric I'll make it one inch longer and I'll add the allowance to join all of the panel pieces together. I'm going to be fixing an off shoulder sleeve very small which would serve as a base for the ruffles and these are the measurements you're going to be needing for that sleeve round shoulder mine is 39 inches the neck width remember we worked with six inches and we worked with a quarter of the measurement that's why i'm multiplying by four so i can have the entire measurement that i've used and that's 24. what i'll do is that you're going to be subtracting 24 from the round shoulder measurement and that gives me 15 inches and since we are still working on a quarter of the measurements i divided 15 inches by four so that means I am using 3.75 inches to draft the off shoulder sleeve. You can use these measurements to draft any kind of off shoulder sleeve it works. Now to draft, I'm going to be placing the 3.75 inch on this line that I have marked. After that, I'll mark the length of the sleeve. I used 2.5 inches, but trust me, it was quite much. So I would advise you to use 1.5 inches because I had to sew in more than the seam allowance which I added. On this new line that I have drawn, I'm going to be marking my chest line measurement of 7 inches and then I'm going to be connecting it to that 3.75 that I marked on the initial line that was on this pattern paper. After that, I would go ahead and then add seam allowances of half an inch all around the pattern. I'm going to be cutting four pieces of this. I know I wrote to cut two pieces, but in essence, you need four pieces. Guys, these are my panel pieces. I've cut them out on my main fabric and also ironed in interfacing. I also doubled the interfacing around the bust area. And this is obviously for more structure around the bust area. I also have my other panel pieces. This is the lining for the front. 
I also have my back pattern pieces here also the main fabric which I did not interface but I interfaced the lining because it was quite very light this is my skirt pattern both the main fabric and the lining I also have for the front and I have for the back too to join I'm going to be placing right sides against each other starting with the center front and the side front I will then go ahead and sew this all the way down repeat likewise for the other center front panel piece also then also for the back the first thing I'll do is to just go ahead and sew in all of my dart allowances both on the main fabric and also on the lining for the skirt pattern remember we added one inch that allowance that's what i'm going to be sewing down both on my main fabric and also on the lining fabric too for the sleeve i'm going to, to cut out four pieces and i'm going to be using my main fabric to serve as lining you can use your lining to line but i want the fabric to serve as lining and to go ahead and sew this i will be placing right sides against each other sew the allowance i added at the top of the sleeve and also sew down the allowance i added at the end of the sleeve this is how i'm going to be handling the sleeve i've joined my front panel pieces to my back panel piece and this is what i have i haven't ironed yet so this is what i have you can see that even with the half an inch that i took around the bust area it is still very well pronounced what i will go ahead and do next is to iron all of this open i would also iron all of my other panel pieces too for the sleeve i've gone ahead to join it together like i illustrated at the top part and also at the end what i'll do first of all is to trim off every excess seam allowance that i have to reduce any bulge of fabric after which i'm going to be turning it inside out and once i'm done i'm going to be giving this a really good press so this is what it's going to look like i'll go ahead and also give this a good press guys i'm done ironing all of this together and the next thing would be to join the sleeve to the front part of this gown and i've placed my fabric in such a way that the back corresponds with this side of the front so you'd want to arrange it properly i'm going to be fixing my sleeve half an inch away from the top part of this panel and that half an inch is a seam allowance to join to turn with my lining so when you're fixing your sleeve make sure you mark half an inch away i would flip my flip my sleeve over and then also mark half an inch away from my back panel piece and pin it down and once i'm done i would go ahead and sew this down so it's very important that you leave that half an inch it, will, it makes your work smooth when you turn with your lining and it makes it easier for you to turn with your lining this way i'm also going to be repeating likewise for the other sleeve too so guys i've gone ahead to join and this is what i have the next thing will be to join with the lining and i'm going to be illustrating with the back panel piece first of all picking up your lining you want to place right sides against each other match it first of all around the neckline i would secure it with a pin so what i'll do next is i'm going to be sewing it around the neckline i would also sew it down around the armhole making sure that the sleeve which you fix is inside sew it down around the sides and also sew it down around the zipper allowance here i'll just use three quarter of an inch to sew all of this down so i'll just go ahead and sew this down and show us what it looks like i've gone ahead to sew this down i went i had to sew it around the neckline stitch it around the armhole area also around the sides and the zipper allowance what i'll go ahead and do is to bring this out and i'm going to be showing us how this looks like both on the right side and also on the wrong side so this is what i have on the right side and if i flip my fabric over you're going to be seeing what i have on 
the wrong side so this is what i have on the wrong side you can see that it is neatly finished i'll do likewise for this other part of my back pattern too now to work on the front i'll be picking up my lining and then i'm going to be pushing in my two back panel pieces make sure they are inside and then i would align my lining with my main fabric align it around the neckline and go ahead and stitch it around the neckline stitch around the armhole also around the sides and bring it out from the waistline i've gone ahead to do this so what i'll go ahead and do next is to bring this out just like i brought out the back pattern and this is what i have working on the skirt pattern i'm going to be turning the skirt pattern with the lining and i'll do this in quite a unique way this is the right side of the skirts and i'm picking up the right side of my lining this is the front pattern and i'm going to be aligning the m first of all remember our main fabric is longer than the lining i'll go ahead and sew it by the m by half an inch which is what i've done already and since the lining is shorter than the main fabric what i'll do is i'm going to be matching up my lining to my main fabric around the waist so by doing this this would create a sort of an excess or a turnover around the m and that is what i want to achieve so after matching it up i'll go ahead and then stitch this down with just a quarter of an inch and i'll do this on both sides of my front pattern and also do this for my back panel piece too so this is the way i'm going to be turning my lining with my main fabric for the skirt pattern i'm going to be repeating this for all of my skirt panel pieces i've gone ahead to sew it down like i said i was going to and what i'll do next is i'm going to be bringing this out to the right side and you're going to be seeing the outcome of what we just did what you will notice is that there's going to be an overlap of an extra one inch of my main fabric on the inside and this makes your work appear really clean so this is how my back panel pieces too is going to look like the next step would be to join the bodice to the skirt pattern starting with the front i would place right sides against each other and then join it around the waistline i'm also going to be repeating likewise for the back panel pieces place right sides against each other and then join it together I just thought to show us the journey so far so this is what my dress looks like like i said the sleeve would serve as a base for the ruffles so this is the gown this is how far i've come with this dress now the next thing we are going to be moving on to is drafting the peplum or rather drafting the ruffles and for the ruffles i'm going to be using this satin in this part of nigeria where i am we call it shiny face or brighter satin and it is one and a half yard what i'll do first of all is to fold this into four just like we want to cut our full circle i've gonna have to fold it into four the next thing would be to take your round shoulder measurements firmly and divide it by 6.28 and when i did that mine was about 6.3 you don't need to add seam allowance honestly speaking because there will still be an excess when you cut just make sure you take your round shoulder measurements firmly not too tight and not too loose afterwards i'll be using a length of 21 inches and thankfully my fabric was just enough for this length so if your round shoulder is more than 39 you might go for two yards of satin so i'll just go ahead and cut this out after that i'm going to be notching the corners around the fold i would notch it on both ends of this circle that i've cut out i would also notch it around the end of the circle at the bottom too and you need to do this step it's very very important once i'm done notching what i'll go ahead and do is that i'm going to be splitting this my circle and i'm going to be splitting it on just one fold you have to be careful so that you don't split your circle into two pieces so just split on one fold and this is what my circle looks like it is quite wide and quite very large but this is just what it looks like so the very first thing i will do with this is i'm going to be securing the end of the part where i cut out so i'll place right sides against each other and then i'll go over and sew this down i would also repeat likewise for the other end of this peplum too 
place right sides against each other and go ahead and sew it down by half an inch i've gone ahead to sew this down now the next thing we are going to be doing is we are going to be notching all of those notches that we made we are going to be matching them together rather so i'm going to be locating my first notch around the radius which is here and then look for the notch around the m of the circle once i've located it then i'm going to be matching it up i'll go ahead and pin it down so i'm going to be pinning it down i would also locate my second notch you should have three notches i'll locate it and then i'll also pin it down and do likewise for the last notch too once i'm done now the trick is to now go ahead and sew this down and because it is an excess of fabric i'm going to be creating pleats as i sew so i'm going to be sewing the excess of all of this from one end of this to the other notch and this is how i'm going to be repeating this so you sew the excess fabric from one notch to the other notch make sure you pleat very well and um, that's what i'll just go over and do this is what i have this is the result of what i just illustrated make sure you pleat the excess in between the notch and this is it on the wrong side it's going to be plain on the wrong side then the very next thing would be to attach this to the dress i've placed my dress on the mannequin and make sure your peplum is facing you this way make sure the pleated part is facing you so the very first thing i'll do is i'm going to be matching one end of the peplum to the back of the dress making sure i make room for my zipper allowance because you don't want your zipper to cross through so after that i'm going to be placing the pleated area making sure that it is facing the right side of my fabric after which i'll go ahead and pin this down so i would recommend you pinning your peplum all the way down all around your dress so that if there's an excess you can create tiny pleats and you don't it makes your work smooth when you're sewing on the sewing machine so i'm just going over to pin this all around the shoulder area of my dress i've gone ahead to pin it all down so what i'll go ahead and do is to do a top stitch and sew it all around I'm done sewing it all around and this is what we have the very next thing would be to create ruffles with our hand I'm going to be creating ruffles with my hand I will tack it down with my pin first of all after which when I'm done with everything I'll go ahead and stitch this down with needle and thread so this work requires you working with needle and thread so I'm just going over to use my hand to create ruffles or smoking pin it down with Secure it down with pins first of all, after which you can go ahead and then tack it down fully with needle and thread. I would also fix my zipper too. This is the outcome of the dress and I love the way the ruffles came out so beautiful. If you enjoyed this tutorial, kindly give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel, click on the like button. And until my next tutorial, make sure you stay blessed. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Goodbye.